and I'm Don Pratt, host of a show here on Rogers TV that gives you a perspective of police in your community. Welcome to Policing York Region. Got a great opportunity today, and we're going to chat with Detective Constable Ron Van Groff, and he's with the Financial Crimes Unit. And we're going to talk major frauds. Ron, thanks so much for being on the show. Hi, Don. Uh, nice to be here. Thanks. Yeah, we, we've we had a lot of discussion before the show started, and um, frauds is one of those things that it seems to come in all different forms. So. Okay, I guess let's just talk maybe a little bit about what, what does your unit see? What's your unit made up of? So our unit currently is called the uh, Financial Crimes Unit, but okay. previ previously it was called Major Crimes. We dealt with all the all the right. major crimes that came in that were, were reported to, to York Regional Police. Okay. Um, we deal with any anything from uh, credit card credit card fraud to uh, investment scams, mm -hmm. account takeovers, CRA scams. Um, wow. you know, we can spend the whole day just talking about the different types of frauds that, that are occurring. Yeah, and we, we were looking at the list earlier, and it's, it's pretty extensive just how many different types of frauds there are out there. Um, <clears throat> you said you've been with the unit for a couple of, a couple of years yes. now. What's, what's a, a, a typical tenure in, uh, in front? Uh, it's uh, three to five years. Three to five. So you, you get to see an awful lot in those, oh, yes. in those three yes. to five years, right? Yeah. Um, and, and one of the questions that I asked earlier was how many... Uh, how many officers makes up your unit? Uh, right now, we're uh, I think a little over 20 officers uh, in the unit. We're, we're one of the larger off, um, hmm. units in, in York Regional Police. So it's it's a huge testament to just how much fraud goes on definitely, out there. Definitely. And and by all accounts, you said you're you're also quite busy. Absolutely. Yes. Right? There's always always something happening. There's every always day. there's always uh, another call coming in. Um, hmm. uh, a lot of times, uh, it, it borders between a, a civil matter and a criminal matter. So we're right. we're always. You know, we're, we're liaising with the Crown Attorneys a lot, also just to determine if this is a fraud case, if this is a civil case. Right. Uh, but we're, yeah, we're very busy. Yeah. So <clears throat> we were talking about some of the, the most prevalent, I guess, or most common uh, frauds. Can you want to get into that a little bit? Uh, well, in terms of uh, um, value, like loss, uh, mm -hmm. the, the number one uh, report in, in 2017 was the uh, CEO scam. CEO scam. CEO scam. So what what is that? So the CEO scam would be um, when a, a a fraudster manages to uh, get into uh, the, the CEO's email account. So I'll see you're talking chief executive of officer of a company. Correct. So they the big boss. Okay. Correct. Okay. So they they manage to um, to hack into the email account, <coughs> posing as the CEO of the company. Right. And then they'll usually send out an uh, email to someone in the financial department of that company uh, requesting a large sum of money be transferred overseas very quickly. They need it to be like an emergency. Money has to be sent overseas. And typically once that happens, the money's, the money's gone. The money's gone. That's it. Correct. So uh, it's, it's um, I believe for 2017 we had, um, there were approximately 11, 11 occurrences, but they're usually wow. they're large, large sums of money. We, we're, we, yeah, we're, we're not talking. We're not talking a couple of thousand bucks. We're talking some big, correct, big dollars, right? So they actually, so they, they actually get in and, and they're able to pose as uh, the CEO. Yeah. So the, the financial officer would, would get an email and it, he yeah. believes it's from his CEO. From his boss. Um, the, the 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 fraudster. They they're they're very sophisticated. They're able to. Um, I mean, we hear about it on the news every day how corporations are being hacked. Well, yeah. in this type of fraud, they're they're actually hacking into their their email account. No, yeah, okay. You said you, you just touched on um, on a, another topic there. Um, large companies being hacked, and um, I guess that's more for uh, privacy information. Correct. Uh, and then what they'll do is they'll they'll sell the information on the dark web uh, to to criminals. So they'll they'll they'll, they'll obtain. Uh, you know, we had Equifax recently that was that yes. was hacked. And right. um, Equ Equifax stores, you know, social insurance numbers and birth ber uh, birth dates. Right. Once the, the the fraudster gets hold of that, they can now sell that information to to other fraudsters. And once they have that information, they can obtain. Okay. So this is so it's there, there's actually a, a ripple effect here. So Correct. you've got you've got one guy or one group, one team, whatever. Correct. Um, obtaining all this information. Yes. Um, but we've heard of it from. You know, from company credit cards to, um, like you said, Equifax, um, and then they actually sell that information. It's it's typically sold on the on the dark web. <clears throat> on the dark so web. The dark web. That's the bad guys. The bad guys. Yes. Right. Yes. Wow. So, what are what are some of the other frauds that are um, like high, higher priority in, in New York region? Uh, the 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 second uh, and again, 
in terms of financial losses to victims, uh, the second largest one in 2017 was the uh, romance scam. Yes, we've heard about romance scam. So how does that work? So that one, the, the, the fraudster poses as somebody on, on usually one of the dating sites, um, and they uh, their, their goal is to, is to link up with, with somebody and, mm -hmm. and become, you know, usually it starts off to be friendly with them. Right. Um, they'll send pictures of each other back and forth. A lot of times they'll, they'll start communicating through text messaging. Right. Uh, and this can go on for, for several months or, you know, I don't know, up to uh, six months per perhaps. And then they'll start asking them for, for money to help them out. They have a business, their, mo their company uh, okay. needs money. Okay, so then now now we've now we've gotten friendly. Correct. But I'm in a little bit of trouble. And they, they and usually the victim begin you know they they, they start to trust them. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times the victims are you know possibly maybe a, a recent a widow or widower, mm -hmm. and they're they're kind of vulnerable. They they want someone to to, to right. be, you know to to become maybe get into, get involved in a relationship. Yep. So they so the, the the fraudsters gain the trust of of the victim. Yes. And, it's, mm -hmm. I, and, and I think there were 19 of those incidents in, in 2017. Well, well that's, that's a big number. Yeah, and we're talking that's some of those losses are in the, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars that the victims owe. Oh, that's out. horrible. Yeah. That's horrible. And, and that money, once it's gone, it's It's that's typically it. gone. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. It's not, uh, it's not, like your, not like some of your bank account frauds where, you know, basically your, your bank accounts are insured. Correct. This is, this is straight from your... Straight from your account. And, and typically, because it's all nowadays, uh, fraudsters can be anywhere in the world. Um, they could be communicating with them from Europe, Africa, Asia, and they'll, they'll give them a, account information where to, where to transfer to. And once it gets transferred or e, uh, usually wired, gets right. wired over right. to an account in Malaysia, for example, um, yeah. the money's gone. Once That's it's another huge element that, uh, you know, every time we start talking about frauds or any elements of frauds is cyber. Yes. We're, we're not just dealing with the stuff on your street um, or in your town. We're... You said it, it could be anywhere. It could be anywhere, and and and, and the fraudsters are, are very sophisticated. Like we're, yeah. are you know, I've been in the office two and a half years, and we're constantly trying to keep up with with what's going on out there. Yeah. Like they're, I mean, they have unlimited resources. You know, we we, we don't, right? So it's yeah, fair enough. And, and they're 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 utilizing um, um, all types of techniques to to defraud uh, victims out there. Yeah, and they, and you're right. They they're using all types of uh, of uh, methods, but they. Um, this is what they work at. This is their. It is their profession. It's their profession. Yes. Right? Like it's not just. Ah, oh, maybe I'll try this out. Like they're, they're fine tuning and honing their skills. Exactly. To their, it's. I guess it's their job to try and stay ahead of you. I, I would say right. that the, typically the, these frosters would be, uh, you know, the top of, top of the food chain in, in, for, for criminals. Right. They're the, very, the most sophisticated. We're dealing more on an organized level. Ex very organized. Yes. Right. Right. And CRA scam. CRA scam. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty. That's, so. I mean, yeah, that that one seems to uh, ugly, uh, rear its ugly head every now and then. I don't think I've met anyone who hasn't been no. a target of a CRA scam. I know myself. I've I've, I've received in the last six months probably three or four phone calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, myself uh, too. I've received uh, text messages. Mm -hmm. I've received emails. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's anybody out there who hasn't been. If, the, if there is someone out there, then they've been sitting in a, in a room without any technology as, or yeah. any telephone. Yeah, and that's that's typically you know walking through what a CRA scam is. I know in our house we've had them. We were on a on a hot list there for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, you would get a call from uh, it. Been, uh, you know we have caller ID, and it looked like it was CRA calling. It would say CRA. Yes. Right. They'll they they have uh, ways of uh, they, they call it spoofing spoofing the phone number. Spoofing. So there's okay. so there's technology out there mm -hmm. that. You can create any phone number you want through the internet, and then they can use that phone number. So they can. There's. Been, I know we've we've uh, been uh, reports have come into us where someone gets a phone call and it shows up on the phone uh, mm -hmm. from the police, York Regional yes. Police or Toronto Police or Ottawa Police. Um, but obviously, the, the police are not going to call you and tell you that that you have to pay money to the CRA or you're going to be arrested. No, and that's one thing that we are reminded, and we can remind the folks at home too, that um, the, the police are not the tax collectors. Exactly. That's not how it works. If the CRA wants money from you, they're going to, they're going to send, usually going to send you a letter and ask mm -hmm. you to come into their office. They're not, they're not going to call you on the phone. And, and we, we do a lot of training out there, and we, we emphasize that to, 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 you know, if we're talking to seniors or students. Um, yes. You know, if someone is from the government or the police or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, CRA is not going to call you up asking for no. 
Well, no, and we, we actually spoke to the CRA because mm -hmm. um, we, we wanted to know that too. Um, you know, we say that York Regional Police is not in the tax collection business, so it's easy for us to say that. Well, uh, how does CRA communicate with you? And they, they make it very clear that their first, um, their first option is mail. And if you're not going to listen to the mail, then it'll be registered mail. Correct. Um, but it's, it's certainly not a phone call um, demanding you send money, and certainly not a threatening phone call. No, you know if you don't pay, if you don't pay us right now, you're mm -hmm. you're 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 going to be arrested mm -hmm. today. Later yeah. this afternoon, the police yeah. are coming to your house. Yeah, one of my sons actually. He, uh, I thought he had a great response. Um, they, he said the CRA called, you know, identified a CRA, very threatening, very um, belligerent on the phone, mm -hmm. and he says, absolutely, I'm, I'm willing to comply. Just uh, give me your name and your phone number, and uh, I'll call you back this afternoon. And then, of course, the, the other end hangs up. Yeah. That's okay. typically, what, typically what happens. You know, and that's, uh, don't fall prey to it. You're, it's your right to ask questions, right? You, you, don't, you don't have to fall prey just because somebody calls your house. It, it, absolutely. You know, we, we used to say the same thing with, uh, with the scams that used to go on with, um, you know, the hot water heater sales and stuff. You don't have to invite anybody into your house. Exactly. It's not, uh, you know, you didn't invite them, they're not welcome. Exactly. Yeah. Now, the, 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 there's also the immigration scam, which, which is similar to the CRA scam, which is also occurring, and uh, that they, they target, obviously, uh, right. but they don't know well, who they're calling. We're going to come back to that piece right after this short break. Welcome back to Policing York Region, folks. We're going to continue our conversation with Ron. Uh, and we, we left off talking about the immigration scam. And it, what's the immigration scam? How so, does that work? So the immigration scam is, is pretty much very similar to the CRE scam. Okay. Right? You'll get a phone call from uh, somebody saying they're from the immigration department and that you, you potentially uh, owe money on your, you know, oh. on your immigration. And it, for whatever, whatever the money is, you owe money. If you don't, if you don't pay it, you're going to get deported immediately. So, you know, usually they're targeting, obviously, immigrants. Yeah, um, they yeah. don't know who, when they're making the phone call, they don't know who they're calling. But out of 100 phone calls, they're, they're bound to get a couple. So they're more there. fishing for, they're fishing, for yes. who it might be, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I'm, I'm assuming in that case, it's the same thing. If you've sent the money, that money's likely It's gone. gone. It's gone, yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> that's, that's horrible. Yeah. I know. So did we, did we talk on, touch on the, the top five? Um, the other one I think we mentioned, uh, I didn't mention, was the the virtual kidnapping. That was that was that. Yes, we, were, we saw that last year. It, it occurred in Toronto and in York Region. Yeah, uh, and that was targeting uh, uh, Chinese students. Mm -hmm. So the Chinese student gets gets a phone call from somebody saying that they're from the Chinese government. Oh, I remember reading about that last fall. Yeah, yeah. and uh, if you don't, they, they'll they usually tell them that they're um, they're in a lot of trouble or. Whatever the whatever they're in trouble for, they can make it up. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to go into hiding. Don't speak to the police. Don't answer your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they don't follow the instructions, you know their their parents are going to be responsible. The parents are going to get into arrest. So they haven't actually kidnapped somebody. They haven't kidnapped anybody. It's a wow. it's a whole the it's whole a thing from the get go is a is a, is a fraud. Wow. And then, then once they go into hiding, they'll they'll contact. Usually they're they're it's Chinese that are calling Chinese because this person yes. now will contact their the parents. Um, and I'm not sure how they get. Their parents' information, yeah. but yeah. they contact their parents in, in China, telling them that their that their child has been kidnapped, and if they don't pay this amount of money, they're you know they're going to hurt their. So this so, so this victim is quite simply being feared into not reporting anything. Correct. Don't answer your phone. So when mom and dad call, hey, like what what what's going on? He's not even responding. Right. So they are actually assuming that he is kidnapped. Right. And I believe we had three in York. Uh, it was a th uh, there are several in York region. I know that Toronto had three of them that went 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 into hiding for for for. Yeah. The time it before they find. Yeah, the one found them. the one that I remember specifically last fall. Yeah, he went into hiding for three or four weeks, and it caused uh, the family great grief. Yeah, so we so I I came up with um, with an idea where we can go into into schools uh, in yeah. York region and and talk to uh, students that are newcomers to Canada, typically nice. uh, between grade grade nine, grade between nine and so eleven. You're, so you're doing a, a bit of a proactive. Piece proactive, here. yes. Well, I mean, which is part of our job. Yeah, we go out and, sure. and we don't we do a lot of. Um, 
discussions in the senior homes as well, but we also have sure. to focus on on the on the, the students. Mm -hmm. So we'll go in and we'll we'll talk about all the the, you know, the main frauds that are occurring out there and and uh, what to be aware of. Uh, we tell them you know if something looks too good to be true, it probably is. Absolutely. And the oldest it, oldest saying in the book, and still we have a hard time listening exactly. to it, right? And and we 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 make sure that that you know at the end of the the presentation they go home uh, speak to their you know let their parents know their you know whoever they're living with uncles grandparents relatives mm -hmm. cousins spread the news of what they learned so it, it'll help you know pass pass on all the information across across the region it's, it's a great place to start right and we we say that in uh, in many areas uh, on this show it, it's a great place to start in the schools mm -hmm. right start people when they're young um, <clears throat> and I know that you do um, uh, you and some of your team members do Presentations to, to you know to service groups or to uh, to seniors groups, yes. which is which is fantastic. Um, but getting into the schools is is a key element. Well, especially the schools because the students are t typically nowadays every every kid has a smartphone. Yes, um, and and they're all they're all potential victims when they're out there, you know, purchasing things with their phone, uh, using Wi-Fi. We talk about the dangers of Wi-Fi. Yes. Uh, when they go to coffee shops or you know when they're if they're using Wi-Fi public Wi-Fi mm -hmm. uh, not to um, do any any personal banking information uh, okay. you know, not not to send any any information out there that's so, personal. So what are what are the risks there with like a, that's not, that's a that's an element that I'm I'm a little removed from but what are what are some of the risks in using public Wi-Fi? Well. The, Typically, what happens is is there can be a, a fraudster sitting in the coffee shop with um, I'm not sure the exact equipment they use, but it could be a laptop. And what they're doing is they're they're sending on a signal to look like, for example, if it's Starbucks, their signal will look like the Starbucks logon for the Wi-Fi. So it might have a you know minor change to it. Could maybe it's spelled a little differently. Something very very mm -hmm. little, very very minute yeah. change. Mm -hmm. uh, and the the unsuspecting victim goes and logs onto his signal and now whatever information you're if you're doing any kind of banking information any kind of uh, uh, sending off yeah. personal information yeah. he now is getting all your information yeah you've logged into your bank account he now has your bank account right. number your password it, it, it's it's common and it, it occurs in airports hotels because travelers typically like to mm -hmm. do their banking while they're waiting for their flight or in the airport yeah, sure. so they're logging onto the Wi-Fi and unknowingly they're logged on to Fraudsters onto the bad guy and his his onto his server and now whatever information they're yeah. they're using he's getting hold of that. So the biggest rule of thumb is know what you're logging on to. Correct and and don't do anything any financial transactions or anything any kind of personal information. Anything that shares anything that potentially could share your personal Correct. information. Yes. Right. We were talking uh, a little earlier about some of the financial crimes and banks and, mm -hmm. and what have you. Um, again, that, like that sounds like it's uh, it's a huge umbrella there too. It is. Uh, I mean. Unfortunately, the banks in the end are the victims. Um, so when someone, how's that? Uh, well, typically, if, if if an account is taken over, okay. um, someone, for example, uh, uh, calls up calls up the bank, mm -hmm. uh, posing as you, okay. and, and I don't know, maybe they they obtained your information. There's different ways right now through you know there could have been a, a big data breach at a at a company that you had your information on. They'll call up posing as you. They'll have all the correct information, and they'll they'll ask to send out a, a credit card. Or the last, you know, for wow. a new credit card. So now they're going to get a credit card in the mail with a, with a PIN number, Holy and smoke. by the time you figure it out, yeah. it might, you know, five, six, ten thousand dollars may have already been put on put on the card. Yeah. So in the end, the, it, you're unaware of it. You're 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 not even involved. So the bank the bank takes the hit for that. Well, something similar happened in a, in a, to a member of our family, and this this was a few years ago though, um, where they had used their credit card. Um, I, I don't recall the, mm -hmm. the, the exact whether it was a gas station or a convenience store, what have you, and the the, the credit card got copied. Yeah, um, is is that something that's still going on? It's still, it's still occurring. Yes, we, I mean we have uh, in our office uh, the, a bunch of members that are that that's all they focused on is is the the credit card uh, credit card frauds. Really, it's, so it's huge. I mean the banks are. Spending a ton of money to try to try and prevent this from happening. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know. I see now. Most of our credit cards have chips in them. Yeah, I understand that. That um, again, this is this is out of my realm. Yeah, but I understand that that makes it more difficult to. It, it, it makes it more difficult. Companies. However, the, the, the again the, the fraudsters <coughs> know how to. They, they, they've been able to beat that system by now obtaining a card in your name with with the pin number. Well, so they're not even trying to—they're not even they, trying to they, copy. They've yours. gone beyond. They're, yeah, they're—they're they're already. They're not even trying to manipulate. The, now there are there are other uh, ways of manipulating the chip, but typically they 
like I had, I had a, a large case recently. There were numerous, numerous uh, credit cards involved. Um, and it, in, in that case, it was all uh, credit cards obtained fraudulently through methods where they, they call up posing as somebody uh, wow. with their information. So this is all part of identity theft. Identity which theft. Which, again, is, is another whole... Uh, a whole umbrella onto itself, right? Right. So if someone if someone thinks they're a victim of identity theft, they can they can go online yrp.ca and and file a report. Right. Because uh, right. it's pretty common. But usually, yeah. typically, the the bank will they have their own investigators, their fraud investigators, and right. they they usually know pretty quickly that if 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 the person is the one who spent the money or if they're a victim. Yeah, I suppose the banks are also acting in not just in your best interest but also on their own, right? Like okay. they they do want to they do want to mitigate this it costs them like you said. It costs them a, f a fortune, yes. It costs them a lot of money. Yeah. Right? Um, so on the identity theft thing, can we can we go into some of those areas? Sure. Like um, you know, we were talking earlier about um, even, you know, leaving things like discarding your mail. Mhm. Mm Right. Yeah, you don't want to, obviously, uh, that's one of the ways that the, the, the bad guys, they'll, they'll go around looking. A lot of people throw out their, their you know, credit card uh, bills and mm -hmm. a lot of personal information. Uh, typically, you should be shred and try to shred anything that's from the bank or anything that has personal information on it. Uh, I wouldn't even, myself, I wouldn't even want to put my own name and address in, into the mailbox. Like, I, I tear everything up. Yeah, we do, too. Um, one of the most commonly used tools in my office is a shredder, yeah, um, and and that's exactly what it's for. Uh, we don't we don't we don't uh, we don't discard anything. Now there's 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 other ways that the fraudsters uh, obtain your information through through uh, you know they they'll attach viruses to your to your um, you know you might open up um, people surf the internet they open yeah. up they open something up and mm -hmm. and that, it, they don't realize they're actually attaching a virus to your, to their in their computer and sometimes you know that virus can. Can provide the, mm -hmm. the bad guy with with all the information that they're that they're looking for, and that that's a whole topic all on that's its a whole own, other right? a whole like other getting yeah. into that whole cyber and uh, and how people attach and, and and obtain your information. Correct. I mean, we could spend a whole day just talking about yeah. credit credit card frauds and how they do yeah. it and how it works. It's, yeah, it's, we it, we might do that one time. <laughs> it's very but sophisticated. It's, yeah, no, it it absolutely is. Um, we've we've known people that have had their. Um, their contacts and what have you compromised. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone in the room has, at one time or other, gotten an email from uh, you know, and it looks like it's from your buddy. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it'll, but it you know, like you said earlier, one letter will be different. That's right. The, correct. The space will be in a different spot. Correct. Correct. Right, and that's that. That's all part of of their mastermind. It's, it, it? it's become so prevalent that when when we get presentations now, we, you know, we used to say, okay, who, who here has been a target of, of a fraud? Mm -hmm. Now we'll ask, oh, who here hasn't been a target of a fraud? <laughs> it's a, and and pretty much nobody raises their hand because everyone's been targeted either by mail, by phone, by email, mm -hmm. text messages. Um, I mean, it, just, just by the few that we've talked on, and, and I mean, we, we know that that list is is, is huge. Uh, just by the few that we've touched on, um, it, it, it's unsurmountable how how much uh, grief can be caused. It's it's a, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of victims out there. I mean, uh, the banks obviously are losing are losing a, a ton of money, but we have you know uh, yeah. victims as well that are that are losing a lot of money. And yeah, another topic on that of uh, reporting. You know, we talked about online reporting, of mm -hmm. course. Um, you also, we've had the intake number up on the screen a couple of times for folks yeah. if if they ever needed to. Um, there's also the just a non-emergency number at, yep. at YRP. Um, but there, you know, there's um, the, the federal government, I believe, has uh, a reporting center as well. There's the, the that's the uh, Canadian Canadian Anti Fraud Center, and right. they, they have a website. So you yes. can even, if you think that you, maybe mm -hmm. you've been defrauded, you're not sure, you can you can call them as well. Um, okay. Go on their website and call them, and and they can help you out because they keep yeah. they they track everything, they log everything, um, yeah. and if they think it's something that you need to contact your local police, they'll they'll tell you. Okay, so as far as you know, Mr. and Mrs. Public that, that feels like they've been compromised, uh, York Regional Police is certainly a good, definitely a good starting yeah. point. Yeah, they can contact um, our, our intake, and and the intake officers are very experienced. They can tell them straight out if if, if it's you know if it's something that's a police matter, and we're yeah. and they'll they'll give them an incident number. They'll take they'll gather all their information, okay. um, or okay. they'll 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 
point them in the right direction. Yeah, they'll, they'll yeah they'll steer them where they where they've got to go, Correct. right? And uh, you know, it's it's good to point out too that you know, as much as you said that your unit is uh, is twenty strong, um, every district also has people operating. Um, every police district rather has, has yeah. somebody operating on the detective level. A, a, fr a fraud investigator, yes. Right. So they they can I mean they can call their local they can walk into their district as well and in their in their area and and. Um, speak to an officer there or file a report. Uh, if it's something where it's where it's a large uh, fraud, they'll mm -hmm. they'll usually typically be um, provided with the intake number so they can uh, call our, our office and then they'll be they'll either speak to someone right off the bat or they'll right. they'll get a call back. Right. So there's so any any method of, of, of reporting, including online, is it, we make it very easy to to, to, yeah. to help right. people and and yeah. and, and, it, and you encourage it at Crime Stoppers as well. Crime Stoppers, uh, yeah. For those that don't want to be. Uh, don't want to be named. Exactly. Ron, thank you so much thank for you. all that thank information. That was great to have you. Folks, that wraps up this episode of Policing York Region. For more information on the show, rogerstv.com. For more information on York Regional Police, yrp.ca. It's been great having you. Look forward to seeing you again.